Hey guys, welcome back to our channel, The Purpose Driven Homestead. Today we thought we'd bring you along as we unbox and set up our electrified poultry netting. Now this is the after and you can see the girls absolutely love it. They're able to forage much further away from the chicken tractor throughout the day and in the evening hours without any fear of predators getting to them. Now's a great time to remind you to please subscribe. You can do it right there in the bottom right hand corner. Also click the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Now we decided to go with the Starkline brand of poultry netting. It's electrified, so that helps with the predators. It's 82 feet long and 48 inches tall. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to get that. And it does help the channel if you're able to purchase it through the link. So please consider doing that. You can also find this brand at Tractor Supply, but we tried several times to order it and each time they were out of stock and couldn't get it to our local store. So you may find it a little difficult and have to go with the online option. Now they make a 48 inch and a 42 inch tall version. We went with the 48. Both are great because you can use them for things you know, outside of chickens, you can use them for larger poultry animals, or you can even use them for things like goats because they're so tall. Now, one thing to point out here is that the fence is actually made of this combination of wire and nylon poly kind of rope. So the verticals aren't electrified, so you won't find any metal in those. But in the horizontals, those are all electrified. So you actually find 12 strands. 11 of those are electrified. The bottom one that's on right at the bottom near the ground is actually not electrified. Now this actually comes with a package of stakes and tie downs, not enough for every pole, but just enough to kind of securely pull the, the, the fence together. We'll show you why that's needed here in a few minutes. It also comes with some instructions here that show you how to energize using a typical energizer. Later on the video, I'm going to show you the video, the, the actual energizer that we use. It's a solar energizer. This is tied up pretty good. It's got a couple of, uh, of these nylon straps pulled across. I've sped up the video quite a bit so that you can see just how it unfurls. I got a little concerned when I was pulling this together because as I unwrapped it, it looks like there is a frayed wire in here. We'll talk about that in a few minutes, but I got concerned at the very beginning when I saw this and I was worried that I was gonna have a defective unit. This is how it looks when you lay it out. Each one of these sections then kind of kind of unfolds on its own. So as you start pulling, they're just kind of laid on top of each other. So it extends. These are the uh, the stakes that go in the ground. Now that I've got it pulled apart, this is actually the part you'd plug into the energizer or connect to the energizer. It looks like when they were making this particular unit, they must have had a mishap and it actually and cut one of the wires or got cut in a machine or something like that. It was tied back together and actually with this poly wire, that's not a big deal. Uh, we actually have this same type of poly wire that we use around our entire garden uh, to keep the deer out of it. And you can actually connect those by tying them together. And as long as the wires are touching, which they will when you tie them together, it's not a big deal. And that's how you ha you'd have to repair these anyway if you had one. So I wasn't too worried once I got it pulled together. It was only the one wire. And again, they had tied it together and I, and I pulled the, top, the knot a little bit tighter. That's the part where you'd actually clamp on to the energizer to electrify the entire netting. And I'll show you some clamps later on that we use that I like a lot because that way you're not trying to wire it directly. You can just clamp on and clamp off as you move it around. All right, so this is how you unfold it. You just kind of pull that first piece back and then it, it's essentially just folded on top of each other like an accordion. It doesn't roll out in this particular sense. It just is, it, you just have to kind of pull it apart. If you have more than one person, it makes it much easier. I was actually outside this day by myself. Uh, so my wife was, was working on something else. So I didn't, I was just me by myself. So it, it's very doable. Don't get me wrong. It's very easy to do pretty long though. So this is the 82 foot version and you can see how long it is when it's just in a single row like this. Now, once you start setting it up in a box or in a circle or however your configuration is going to be, obviously that area is going to be, you know, it's going to cover a much smaller area. It does come with these plastic pieces that cover the stakes up. I think that's for shipping. And also if you wanted to store it over the winter or something like that, it can keep you from poking yourself. Uh, but all in all, it's not a big deal. It's just mainly for shipping. 
All right, we're going to set it up now. Again, I'm doing this kind of by myself, so I stopped the camera a few times. I also wanted to show this lined up so you can get an idea of how tall it is in comparison to our ch chicken tractor what I've got here that I'm about to walk by. You can see here, there's a sag in the middle of it, and that's where I was talking about before. You're definitely going to want to use those anchors. The poles are, you know, they're for moving they're, they're made to be movable so when i pull against it like that which is what you would do with those uh with those anchors and then with the tie lines you're going to pull against that and that pulls that top so that it it has the security and it can be taunt and and it's not sagging like that so something can kind of jump over it or what have you the other thing is that this netting isn't the same size as you look through this the, the netting openings at the top are much bigger than they are at the bottom, and that's designed on purpose. So we had some smaller chickens, some pullets that we're going to show you later on in the video that we were actually using this netting to introduce them to the chickens to an existing flock. And those pullets couldn't get out. Now, chicks, they'll still be able to get out of that. So you're going to have to kind of decide when you're going to take them out of their brooder box and move them into that space and what you're going to do with them. But... When you're using this actual netting, pullets, they won't be able to get through that bottom section. The top section is just a much wider thing. So I like how it's designed with the smaller openings at the bottom to keep those uh, safe. Now, what I did here is I'm counting off the number of stakes. So there's four in each direction. And so this middle part here of the, of the, of the mesh itself, that's the midpoint. So there's four poles in that direction, four poles in the other direction. Right here in the middle is the midpoint. So I wanted to do is kind of eyeball where that was so that when I'm setting it up, I could have it set up in a circle and I could kind of pull it out and have the furthest point be that midpoint. And then I could set up my poles close to the chicken tractor and then made basically a, a rudimentary sphere to kind of go along with the, the space that I had available. There was a fence line and some other stuff that I had to kind of dodge around here. But this was just a rough setup for the first day to see how it worked. I got the door to the chicken tractor kind of propped open here. I just had given them quite a bit of scraps, so they were not overly excited about trying to go and explore because uh, this was in the late fall and we had plenty of scraps, plenty of sweet corn that I had picked that was just bad. It had gone bad, had some bugs in it and some worms and then some some tomatoes and other things that had gone bad as well as a, a pumpkin. So this was all scraps and they were busy getting into that. So they didn't have a whole lot of interest in getting out their first thing. The idea is that this gives them quite a bit of free range when, especially during the fall and winter, when there's a lot less greenery there, you know, there's not as much clover and things like that for them to pick through, they can get in there. I thought you'd also be interested in seeing kind of what a chicken, some of the benefits, so a little sidebar here, some of the benefits of having a chicken tractor. We actually have this tractor that we set up. We we designed it ourselves. There's some things I'd probably would change about it, but a little garden hose action here. Sorry, I was watering the garden at the time. But you can see that's the, the most recent area that they were just moved from. Here's where they were at before that. And you can already see some of the green grass starting to come back a little bit. Again, this was during the, the late fall and it was a little dry this time. So stuff wasn't bouncing back quite as fast. Now this is then the, the sequence before that. So the move before that. So this is three back, we'll call it. And you can already start to see the grass is really starting to come in in patches there. And again, it was really dry, but you can even see it. This is a cucumber seed that fell from one of the scraps from the garden and is sprouting up. That shows you how much nutrients the chickens are putting back in to the soil. And come spring, this stuff's going to just explode to life. Then one move back from that, you can see that it's really taking off. It's not nearly as much. We're moving them every few days. This patch here is just where I should have raked. We actually give a lot of weeds and stuff like that to our chickens. And I should have raked this up, but it, it dried and got matted up. And so there's nothing that was growing through it at this time. Uh, I should have just raked it and it would have been fine. They absolutely, our chickens absolutely love to get weeds and stuff from the garden as we pull them. They love to, to pick them up. Now here is the Gallagher S10 solar energizers that we use for both our chicken coop and for our garden. You can actually attach that poly wire that I'm going to show you in a second over to the chicken uh, the poultry netting, I should say. So I've got it turned off here. This is the S10. They don't actually sell this version anymore, but we love 
this energizer. Now it's a pulse energizer, so it's not on all the time, and that's a way that it can, can conserve the battery, but it's got mile, it can, it can energize miles of electric fence. So this is easily good enough for most people. They actually have a model above this. I'm gonna link both of them in the description below, as well as these leads that I've got in my hand right here because this makes it extremely in, uh, easy to just clamp on to whatever it is you're trying to energize. This is that poly wire that I was mentioning that we use for our garden. And you can see there on the right hand side how we've got it set up. It goes all the way around our garden. We have kind of one or two levels, depending on the time of year. We may have as many as three, depending on what we're trying to keep out. It does a great job of energizing both that poly around the fence, around our garden, I mean, and also the chicken fence. So I've got a link in the description below for that solar energizer and a couple of models uh, above that as well if you have bigger animals that you're trying to keep out. Now I wanted to show you this because these chickens, this was their first day kind of getting out or was in them first day or two. And we have one or two chickens that wanted to get through the fence. So they kept sticking their head through. But here's a week later, you can see that these girls are loving life. They're not trying to get through the fence anymore. They figured out that they can't fit through there. Uh, and they just concentrate on what they can reach inside the fence, or they always seem to have this desire to get what's right outside of it as well. And so sometimes I'll de-energize it during the day so that it doesn't keep shocking them. And their feathers do insulate them quite a bit. So sometimes they don't get quite the shock that maybe you or I would get because their feathers do, uh, they do insulate them quite a bit. Again, guys, please subscribe to our channel. If you haven't already, you can hit that notification bell below as well. And if you want to subscribe, right there in the right-hand corner is how you do that. Now, I want to show you this section as well because this fence has been invaluable in introducing a, a large number of uh, new chicks into our flock. So usually the chickens want to peck them and they want to get, uh, they, sometimes they can bloody them and even kill the younger pullets like this uh, after they've moved out of the chick phase but aren't quite ready to join the flock. What we did is we have a rabbit tractor, and if you want to see that video, I'll link it right here, how to make this rabbit tractor. But we also use it sometimes as an introduction, like a chicken tractor for the smaller uh, pullets like this, while they're, we'll put it right up beside the, the chicken tractor so that the adult chickens can get used to them, see them, but not harm them. This is by far the easiest way we've introduced new pullets into existing flocks before because those chickens can't get to them to harm them. We can let them out during the day like this to pick through, you know, garden scraps and sweet corn and stuff that we've thrown in there. But they can make their way around while we're watching them and we can keep them safe. They can get out here to these, you know, these external watering cans and stuff like that. And they can move around with the flock. But during the other times, they're safe away from them, but the flock is still seeing them. So they don't see them as intruders. They just kind of see them as newly introduced. By far the best way we've done it. We've done it a bunch of ways. This works fantastic. So I'm, again, I'm going to link this uh, earlier if you'd like to see how we made that rabbit tractor. It's also good for broody hens, which we've used it for as well. When, when hens get broody, we can kind of separate them from the flock so they don't have a place to lay. I did want to point out, this is how that fence would look if you don't have the anchor set up. I had just moved the fence to a new spot, so I haven't put them in the ground yet and pulled it tight. So you may or may not decide that you want to have those anchors or you want to fool around with them, but this is how it would look if you don't anchor it down and pull that tight. One of the last things that I wanted to point out is chickens have a pecking order. And you can see here, this chicken just kind of pecked at that one to let it know who's boss, but this fencing gives them space to spread out. So if you have chickens in a smaller chicken tractor or a run, this gives them space to spread out so that they can still establish that kind of dominance, but the chicks can still and the pullets can still get away. Well, guys, thanks for watching today. If you've enjoyed this video, please click that thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel and check out some of these other videos that you might be interested in. And we'll see you next time on the Purpose Driven Homestead.